In milking order, Farmer John is going to have N cows and M observations about his cows. So, in the morning, he milks his cows in a certain order. And with his observations, each one is going to give us a list of which cows need to be milked first. Farmer John is going to maximize the value of X, where X is the first X observations that he satisfies with his milking order, and we want to output the order in which he milks his cows. So let's go look at the algorithm for this question. We can solve this question using topology sort. And the way that works is, we have our M observations by Farmer John. And let's just assume our observations are 1, 2, 3, and 4, 2. Well, what we can actually do is we can use these to build a graph, where our nodes are going to be the cows, and then the edges are going to be based off of each one of these observations. For example, when we have 1, 2, 3, it'll be node 1 pointing to node 2, and node 2 pointing to node 3. And then for something like 4, 2, it would be node 4 pointing to node 2. And if we have extra nodes, obviously they'll just be out here, not really doing anything. But what we can actually do with this is, topology sort is going to give us a data structure, and it's going to look for all of the nodes with nothing else or no other edges pointing to them. So once we put all of our observations into a graph, we can just look for the nodes with nothing pointing to them. And that just means when we have a node with no other edges pointing to it, then it can be milked because we don't have any other cows that need to go before it. So if we were to simulate out this example, it would be we have our data structure for topology sort, and then for this data structure, we're going to first push in all of the values with nothing pointing to it. So all of the cows that are in the beginning in the front, all of the cows that we can technically milk right now with no obligations. So in this case, that would be one and four. And then we just pop the first one off. And what we can do with topology sort is, once we pop the first or whatever element it is off, we can add it to our milking order, and then we can remove it and its edge. And once we remove its edge, we can then look at its child. And if this child here has no edges pointing to it, which in this case it still does, then we would add it to the data structure. But in this case, since it still has an edge pointing to it, then we're just going to continue on. And then we'll pop the next one out, and that's going to be 4. So every time we pop one out, we're going to take that node and we're going to assume we milked it. Since we've already milked it, all of the cows that it originally pointed to don't have an obligation anymore. Don't They don't need uh, any the edge in front of it, so we'll just remove that edge too. And then we'll check its child, and in this case, its child now has no edges pointing to it. So we can now add it to the queue. Once we've done that, we can then pop again, add it to, remove it here, and then we can get rid of it and its edges. And then we can look and add its child if it has no edges pointing to it. And in this case, its child also has no edges pointing to it now. So we add it, and then we pop it, we add it to our lineup, and then we mark it as visited. So using this, if we know all of the observations that we're going to finish, we can basically solve this question using topology sort by finding any cows with no edges pointing to it, or in this case, after building the graph, the cows that are technically the next up for being milked. And then we can remove all of the other cows that it made be milked next. And then we can use topology sort to find our order. Every time we pop one, we add it to our list. Now, the other part of the question asks for x. So the x statements that we use. Before we build our graph, we're going to do a binary search on x. Since if we have less statements, the probability of the graph working is greater, and when we have more statements, the probability of the graph is less. So we'll do a binary search on x, where it would be like true, true, false, false, since more statements means false. 
And then we'll just find the best x or the greatest x like the question asks. And then since we're using, in this case, a priority q, we don't have to really work about, worry about lexiographic order. So we'll do a binary search on x, and every time we check the value of x, we run a topology sort where we turn the first x statements into a graph, and then we run topology sort on that graph and get our lineup. So let's go look at the code for this question. For this question, we're going to have a couple main data structures in the globals. So we'll have our answer, which is just going to store whatever our final answer lineup is. And then we're just going to store our input as a 2D vector. So I'm going to read in the values of n and m. And then we're going to resize our two vectors. And then we'll just read in the input. So we'll read in the size, and then we'll push back a list of the current observation. That way, our input vector is going to be a vector of observations. Once we've done that, we're going to run our binary search. And inside this binary search, we're going to do a couple main things. We're going to have a typical binary search. This can be substituted out for anything else. But then we're going to run our check function. When we run our check function, it's just going to input our x, so mid, and then it's going to return back a boolean value. So we're going to loop through the first x statements, and for each of these statements, we're going to get the value. So in, like we saw earlier, when we build the graph, we're going to basically put every node, we're going to give the previous value inside of that observation, to it as its parent. So what that basically means is we're going to give ADJ and then the previous value in the observation. So we're going to start from one even though it's zero based. And then for that value, we're going to push back the current number in the observation as its child. So if we have one, two, three, that's just going to push back two into one's ADJ, three into two's ADJ. And then we're going to create a vector called in degree. And in degree is just going to store how many other edges are currently pointing to this node. So since we push this back as a child, we're going to add one value to its in degree. And this is just going to speed up our topology sort by a lot since we won't have to loop through every ADJ and check to make sure that it has no edges. For our topology sort, we're going to start off by using a priority queue. And so we're going to use greater, which is basically going to uh, sort the priority queue based off of whichever values are smaller. So if we input it as 4, 1, then it's just going to push and it's going to change the order to 1, 4. That way we output the lexiographic smallest value. We're going to loop through all of our nodes. And in this code, we have the input as 0 base, but the nodes as 1 based. And then we're going to check to see. If there are no nodes pointing to it currently, or if its in degree is equal to zero, then we can push it in. And that just means that no nodes are pointing to it, so that's just going to be what we'll start off as. So if our priority queue is empty, we're going to return false, since obviously the topology sort can't run now. But if it's not, we're just going to continue on with our while loop. So we're going to store a value called turns, and this is just going to keep track to see how many nodes we've currently visited. And then we're going to increment it every time we run our while loop. So while we still have values in our priority queue, we have our node as the top. We pop that value. And then in our ANS vector, the current turn is going to be stored as node. So again, our ANS value is going to store the lineup of the current nodes that we're going to be milking in order, or the cows that we're milking in order. So every time we loop through, we're just going to add this into our ANS in order to store the value. We're then going to loop through, and then we're going to loop through every child in this ADJ node, meaning we're going to loop through all of the things it points to. And since we basically just removed it, we milked this cow, for every one of its children, we're going to remove one from its in degree, and then we're going to check the value of its in degree. So again, in degree is going to save us a lot of time since for every child we only need to check to see if this is zero 
and if it's zero, that means there are no edges pointing to it, meaning we can push it. So at the very end, we're going to check the value of turns. If it's not equal to n, that means there was some node or some nodes that we weren't able to visit. And in that case, we know that something's wrong with our graph, meaning that this current x does not work. So if it's not equal to n, we didn't visit all of our nodes, our answer is wrong right now, so we'll return false, otherwise we return true. And then at the very end, we're just going to print out our current a and s vector. So we're going to loop through and print it out, and that's the end of our program.